I am really excited to be able to be with you this evening. Uh, on behalf of my family, we really, really appreciate you and this wonderful church that meets here. Uh, very thankful for Sam. I've been very impressed with him the few years that I've been able to get to know him upon arriving at Southwest. And I know that you are so very blessed to have he and Julie. And certainly when we think about the connections that this congregation has even with Southwest and the Southwest School of Bible Studies, it really is a very deep relationship. And for that, we are, we are very grateful and uh, uh, certainly to, for me to be able to be here for my first time, to be able to be with you and meet some of you, and I've met already some of you before, and to be able to be with you tonight is really indeed an honor. We're very excited that we have two of your fine young ladies who are with us as first-year students and are already making a great impression in the school, and uh, we're just very, very glad to have them. Do you need more courage? to tell others the good news of Jesus Christ? I do. Do you uh, find yourselves sometimes being timid when it comes to taking a stand for that which is right? I do. I'd like to call your, your, uh, call your attention one of the songs in our songbook, and if you'd like to read along with me, feel free to do so. Consider the words in number 540. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble on the brink of any earthly woe, that will not murmur or complain beneath the chastening rod, but in the hour of grief or pain will lean upon its God. A faith that shines more bright and clear when tempests rage without, that when in danger knows no fear and darkness feels no doubt. Lord, give us such a faith as this, and that whate'er may come, will tasting here the hallowed bliss of an eternal home. Beautiful words talking about Jesus calling us to be bold. It was the occasion that we read in Matthew chapter 17 where three of Jesus' closest apostles had just been privileged to be able to have seen Jesus' whole visage become transfigured. And now as the scene had begun to end. Jesus walks up to them and says, Arise and be not afraid. Matthew chapter 17, verse 7. In like manner to you and to me, Jesus, with regards to the service we render unto Him, is saying, to us, arise and be not afraid. This whole summer series, you have been looking at Jesus Calls Us. And tonight we want to examine the topic, Jesus Calls Us to Be Bold. I'd like for you to take your Bibles and open with me to Acts chapter number 4. I cannot think of a better passage upon which we may spend the majority of our time this evening together than in Acts chapter number 4. Now you may recall the background behind this. Going back into chapter number 3, we have Peter and John. They have been arrested and are brought before the Sanhedrin because of uh, an amazing thing, because they had created a commotion within the temple complex. And certainly they had uh, healed a lame man at the beautiful gate. And now as a result of that and the commotion that was created, they have been brought before and have really been questioned hard by these leaders of the Jewish faith. And so now I'd like to begin reading in verse number 25. 
just after they have been released. Um, Verse number 23, Acts chapter 4. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said... Now let's note the words of this very public prayer. Lord, thou art God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David hath said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Now, here's the reaction, the result. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Let's begin right off the bat, and show the connection that boldness has with prayer. If you find yourself like me, you find yourself in moments where you realize, I could be more bold for Jesus Christ. The first thing we ought to do is pray. Here they prayed for boldness, verse 29. And they received that in answer to their prayer, verse number 31. I pause to ask you now, do you believe in the power of prayer? I mean, really. Do you really believe in prayer? It may shock you to know that there are those today, even sadly among our own brethren, who do not believe in the power of prayer. There are others whose faith may be wavering, those who may be doubting at times in their lives. I know that because I get questions as a preacher from time to time, from members who are struggling with the subject. And you may be one of those. Does God really answer prayer? If He does not, if you're one of those who believe that God does not answer prayer, you're going to have to contend with those early Christians in Acts chapter 2 who continued in prayer, verse 42. If you don't believe God answers prayer, you're going to have to contend with James, who made it very clear the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man does not just avail. It avails much, James 5, 14 through 16. If you are somewhat doubting as to whether God answers prayer, you're going to have to contend with King Hezekiah, who on one occasion was threatened by King Sennacherib of the Assyrians. And on this occasion, Isaiah came unto him and said unto him, In 2 Kings 19 and verse 20, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, That which thou hast prayed unto me against Sennacherib king of Assyria, have I heard. God hears and answers our prayers. Do you want to be bold 
in your service to the Lord Jesus Christ, then drop on your knees and ask God for boldness. Not only that, consider this text even more closely. Here was their prayer. Can you not just imagine what they were feeling? Peter and John, as they were standing before the very men who were responsible for the murder of their Lord and Savior. It was these two men that while the other apostles fled and ran and hid, they watched from afar, Peter and John even more closely, and witnessed the things that transpired with regards to this mockery of a trial that they were giving Jesus Christ. And now, not months later, they're standing before these very men. I can only imagine what was going through their mind. Are they about to kill us? As they killed our Lord. And so now, knowing God was with them every step of the way, they were able to uplift and encourage this congregation there in Jerusalem as they were released and went and prayed even for more boldness. And verse 31, look at the response. The place was shaken. You ever experienced an earthquake? I imagine some of you may have, if, if not an actual earthquake like they have out in California, maybe some tremors here and there. Here in the midst, they, this place was literally shaken. We're not expecting that today from a miraculous perspective, but here is the point of application by which we today may be able to make. You show me a congregation of people like right here at West Hill. You show me a congregation of of people who are praying together for boldness. And I will show you a city of Corsicana that will be shaken by your influence. We can literally change the world when we acquire boldness in our service to Jesus Christ. But not, but not only that, you continue to see the fact that they spake the Word of God with boldness. You remember Peter, right? Peter who had now his moment of redemption. Peter who now had been able to somewhat erase a mistake he had made earlier. The servant girl looked at him and said, oh, I, I recognize you. you. You're the one who was with that man. Only to hear him cry out, Oh no, you don't know what you're talking about. It's not me. And not once. And not twice. Three times. He denied the relationship that he had with Jesus Christ. To that infamous point, Luke's record gives where on that third time, and the rooster had crowed, and all of a sudden, Jesus turned and their eyes locked. And it hit Peter what Jesus had said. And that's the moment he ran, weeping, Bitterly, could you imagine? That is one of those instances that just leave me in absolute awe. 
to have considered what would I have done if at that moment my Lord locked eyes with me. He had been forgiven. Jesus had informed him. He's still in need of his service. And now here he is, standing before these men, all because of his service to Jesus Christ. If only that servant girl could see him now. As he is standing boldly for his Lord. Hear him say, Whether is it right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God judge ye? For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Chapter 4, 19 and 20. Here he is speaking the word of God with boldness. Not only that, the verse continues. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They spake the Word of God with boldness. The multitude of them, verse 32, that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Look at the unity among these people. Have you ever seen a church shred because of problems? Because of discord? Because of strife, hatred, misunderstandings? Have you ever seen a, a congregation of people literally torn apart because of ungodly attitudes? That is not the result of a congregation of people who are called by our Lord Jesus to be Bold. Let me tell you the story about a Greek mythological character named Cadmus. Anybody ever heard of Cadmus? Sam's nodding his head. Excellent. I asked my daughter, who uh, is the encyclopedia of Greek mythology, and she hadn't heard of him. So, Cadmus was the grandson of Poseidon. As a consequence of killing a water dragon sacred to the Greek god Ares, Cadmus had to serve him for eight years. It was at the conclusion of that service, at the end of the eight years, that he is now about to marry Harmonia. And it was at this wedding that Harmonia receives a necklace. It became known as the Necklace of Harmonia. The problem was, the bearer of this necklace brought misfortune to everyone who possessed it. And so, because he killed the sacred water dragon of Ares, and because his wife continued to wear this necklace of Harmonia, misfortune followed him the rest of his life. Now I say that to say this. I don't know about you, but it's been somewhat unfortunate that I have seen congregations that because of ungodly attitudes strife seems to follow them always as if they're wearing the necklace of Harmonia. It's because of the fact that these brethren are filled with ungodly attitudes. They're not a congregation of great prayer. And they're not bold in their service to Jesus Christ. All of these things go together. In the next place, boldness is, boldness is absolutely necessary to stand up for what is right. There's going to come the time when you and I are going to have to take a stand. 
There's going to come a time when you and I are going to need to stand for what is right. I remember last year, I'm a, 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 a National Football League fan. Um, in fact, Sam and I had come in earlier about my Miami Dolphins sticker on, on my van. And, and yes, we had the unfortunate situation last year between... Jonathan Martin and Richie Incognito and, and, and br really brought to light uh, bullying. I don't know if you've ever had a bully yourself. I hope you haven't. I certainly hope you're not a bully, right? I had a bully one time. I had a bully. His name was James. And uh, I had him in the third grade. He met me after school almost every day. And really it was somewhat insignificant as I look back now. He, he really just robbed me of uh, whatever money I had, whatever change I had in my pocket. But this one day he asked me, and, and this is, you know, there's, it makes no sense. There's no rhyme or reason to this. He, that's the way bullies are. He, he said, I... You see this little boy right here? I want you to fight him. I want you to fight him right now. It's as if he was becoming a Don King promoter or something. I'm going to arrange this fight. And, and so that's what happened. Well, I didn't want to fight him. And I wasn't going to fight him. And so I found a brief moment. And you know what I did? I ran. Oh, yes. I ran all the way home. Never did. Sometimes you may take a stand for what is right. And in doing so, you may find yourself all alone. I, I call your attention now to 2 Timothy chapter number 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, you will see the Apostle Paul who had an experience similar to this. He had problems with a man named Alexander the coppersmith. 2 Timothy 4, 14 through 16. And it was on that occasion that he said to Timothy, No man stood with me. Verse 16. He stood all alone. He had the courage. He had the conviction. He had the boldness to stand alone. Even like Jesus. All alone. Jesus stood for what is right. Despite the circumstances you and I may face, the great news that I have for, for you from God's Word is that you never, ever, ever have to be alone. The great news is God says to you and to me, I am with you. I will be with you. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Hebrews chapter 13, 5 and 6. So many other passages. Romans chapter 8. All of these emphasize the fact that I can be bold in taking a stand for what is right because I know that my God is looking down on me with a great big anthropomorphic smile on his face and he is saying I am with you I'm proud of you you're doing right you keep it up and even if you feel like you're all alone on an island you can have the assurance that God is with you the Bible tells us He is. And praise be unto God, we are able to find ourselves in Jesus Christ. Because there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Romans 8 and verse 1. We can dare to be bold. Let me conclude by expressing the fact that if we are indeed going to share the great news of salvation with the lost world, 
It's going to take boldness on our part. We are going to find ourselves in moments of timidity where we become shy, where we become a little bit afraid, where we're not sure of ourselves or of the recipients. And we're going to need boldness to take the gospel of Jesus to a lost and dying world. Let me tell you the story of a guy that went into a cafe here in Texas for lunch. He sat down at the counter to order. The waitress said here, excuse me, the waiter, it was a male. The waiter said, here, drink this coffee. I make the strongest coffee in the state of Texas. Well, the customer replied, I don't want any coffee. And the waiter persisted, here, I said drink this coffee. It's the strongest coffee in the state of Texas. But I don't want to drink the coffee. And that's when the waiter pulled out his revolver, pointed it right at the customer, and said, I said, drink this coffee. And so the man reluctantly took the coffee cup and he, he drank it. And the waiter then took the gun and all of a sudden turned it around and gave it to the customer and said, here, point this at me and I'll drink it now. Now, we often think about evangelism in the same way. It's a, I'm afraid to, but I need you to encourage me, and I'll try to encourage you kind of thing. Think about it this way. We loudly sing, this little Christian light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. But in the context of our everyday life, those stanzas that involve hiding under a bushel or Satan poofing, seem all too familiar. We all love God. I'm sure we all pray every day. I have no doubt that we may read His Word and praise Him, but at the same time, we lack boldness when it comes to sharing the message. Do you know the song... I want to be a soul winner for Jesus every day. He does so much for me. If we are going to be called by Jesus to be bold, we don't have to feel fear failure. We do not have to fear failure. We recognize as Christian soldiers, we are continuing to march under the favor of our great captain to go out to fight for the souls of others in a battle with Satan, to thrust ourselves in the heat of battle where people are lost, to rescue them as a fireman with great courage, braves the heat of the fire to rescue those who are trapped and dying. We don't have to fear failure knowing that even people, even people in the days of our Lord Jesus rejected Him. John 6, 66, they rejected Him. That was not a representation of his failure is not a representation of mine. We have any fishermen, any anglers in the assembly tonight? How many of you go out fishing and you use one lure and when it doesn't work, you pack up everything and you leave and you go back and say, well, I'm a failure. No. Oh, you try another lure. You go to a different spot. You keep trying until you're successful. Why can't we do that with soul winning? Jesus calls us to be bold. I don't have to fear conflict. I'll grit my teeth and knocking on doors here in the community. 
And I know potential repercussions may occur. Jesus calls us to be bold. I don't have to fear the cost. I don't have to fear the time involved. Just as I enjoy fishing for fish, and there's an expense, and there's time fishing for the souls of men, incurs some expense and time. Jesus calls us to be bold. I don't have to fear the negative influences around me. Jesus already told me, many are called, but only a few are chosen. The laborers are few. If you're in a situation where you look deep within and you realize, I, I, I could be more bold. Jesus calls me to be bold and I haven't really been as bold as I should. Or, or I remember back, I do, to moments and opportunities in my life where I let them slip by. Never to get them again. I think back on that and I think, wow, if only I had been more bold in that situation. We've all been there. Don't beat yourself up. Don't feel riddled with guilt to the point that it quenches all aspirations of service to the Lord. Realize, I can be better. Just as Sam said, I can be better. I've had moments of success, I've had moments of failure, but Lord, let me be more bold, greater than what I was before. And let's move forward. That's the Apostles. Had already displayed boldness, Acts 4.13, but they prayed for more boldness. May God grant us boldness to hold on to the pure and unadulterated doctrine of Jesus Christ. 2 John 1, 9-11. May God grant us boldness to reprove sin when necessary. Ephesians 5.11 May God grant us boldness to preach and to teach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. May God grant us boldness to stand for our Lord and represent Christ even when we're ridiculed by our friends, by those in the world, may God grant us boldness to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Titus 2, 11 and 12. May God grant us boldness to rear our families by the pattern that God wants us to rear our families. May God grant us boldness to obey Him rather than man. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, yet still will I follow. Though none go with me, yet I'll still follow. Though none go with me, I will still follow. 
No turning back. No turning back. Jesus calls us to be bold. Would you bow with me in prayer? Holy and righteous Father in heaven, we are very thankful for all of the blessings you bestow upon us, for the great blessings which are ours from Thee, in Jesus Christ our Savior. Blessings that He provides for us in the church He established. Blessings that are ours to obtain in the rich assembly of Thy people, even such as what takes place right here in this great congregation. Thank You, Father, for these elders who shepherd the flock. Thank you for all of the deacons who serve in so many different ways. Thank you for the servants, the ministers, and preachers who labor with these people. Father, thank you for every family that makes up this great church. Father, not only for the congregation that meets here, but for every congregation around the world, may we constantly request from Thee more boldness. Father, may we be more bold to share the rich truths of Jesus with those who need Him even when they don't realize it. May You grant boldness to us that we may be able to stand for what is right even when it is unpopular among the public consent. Father, grant us boldness to do what is right every time, no matter what the consequence. Father, for those who cannot be with us tonight, for those who are sick, for those whose health are struggling, for those, Father, who are in need of Thee at this very moment in time, we pray your blessings be with them, be with the ones who are taking care of them, be with the ones who are providing care, be with doctors, nurses, be with the medications they may be receiving, be with the therapists who are offering therapy, be with their treatments as they are receiving treatment, whatever the case, Father. We pray that you will work through the ones who are offering care and providing such great care that they may be able to be restored to the health they so desire. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to be enlightened and enriched by the fellowship that takes place here. Bless us this evening. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who died on the cross save us from our sins and wash us in his blood. May we all say together, Amen.